Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the lost sheep. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. In last week's parable, The Rich Fool, Jesus told a story in response to a man who asked him to force his brother to divide the family inheritance with him. Jesus took that opportunity to teach all who were listening about how God cares for everyone. Jesus warned about the dangers of coveting what others have. He said, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Then he offered the thought that one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. What we own in this world is not a measure of the success we will enjoy in the next world. Immediately after sharing these important principles, Jesus told the parable of the rich fool. He called him rich because he planned for success in this life, but not in the next life. God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? Luke chapter 12 and verse 20. Jesus finished this parable by inviting people to be rich toward God. Luke chapter 12 verse 21. A rich relationship with God is available to all who will take time to listen to his voice, read his word, and open our hearts to his will and his ways. If you knew your life would come to an end today, are you ready to meet Jesus? If you're not ready to meet Jesus, why delay another minute? Receive Jesus as your Savior. Now, Dr. Luke devotes the 15th chapter of his gospel to three powerful parables about being lost. The first parable is about a lost sheep. The second is about a lost coin. And the third is about a lost son. Luke begins this chapter by saying Jesus was so well liked by tax collectors and sinners that they gladly came to hear him speak. Now, here is the strangest thing about religious people. When the Pharisees and scribes saw that Jesus welcomed sinners, they were offended. Religious people often do their best to keep those who need to hear the message of Jesus the most as far away from themselves as possible. Where did this idea come from? Sadly, the rabbis had a saying that went like this. Let not a man associate with the wicked, not even to bring him to the law. One time when I was overseas, I visited the bookstore belonging to another religion. I asked if I could buy their holy book, and without asking me any questions, the shop owner immediately said to me, he could not sell it to me because I was a sinner. I'm so glad the Bible is not like that. It can be given to anyone who wishes to read what God has to say. For this reason, the Bible is the most translated book in the world. Every day we give away Bibles to people who want to read it for themselves. If you would like to receive a Bible in your language, write to me, and I'll send you an electronic version of the Bible. So with this information, it should come as no surprise that when the Pharisees and the scribes saw that Jesus was welcomed by sinners, they were offended. Dr. Luke records they grumbled and were saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Luke chapter 15 and verse 2. Of course they said it loud enough for Jesus to hear their protest. And Jesus responded to their complaints by linking together three parables 
with one clear message. Let's listen to what Jesus says as he tells the first of these stories. Jesus turned to the Pharisees and scribes, and he asked them, What man of you, having 100 sheep, if he's lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. Luke chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. Have you ever been lost? Now, most people are not aware of the moment that they become lost. It's usually after the fact that we realize, whoa, I'm lost. I've lost my way in a few cities where English is spoken. And that's bad enough. But worse than that, I've been lost in some cities where English is not spoken. It's a terrible feeling to be lost. If you've been lost, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take a moment and ask, how do sheep get lost? They get lost by looking down, by not staying connected to the flock, by not staying close to the shepherd, and by seeking their own satisfaction. Strangely, people get lost spiritually in exactly the same way. They look down and not up to God. By not staying connected with a spiritual community, and by not staying close to Jesus, who called himself the good shepherd. If you're lost, the good news is that God has never been lost. And he knows the events that cause people to lose their way. And even before we realize we are lost, God is working on a plan to help us find our way back to him. Listen to these words from prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. Then he goes on to say, As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among the sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. If you're in a place of darkness, Jesus is looking for you. These words from prophet Ezekiel 43, verse 11 and 12. Then prophet Isaiah said, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, verse 6. Jesus said that the good shepherd leaves the 99 in the open field to search for the lost one. What does the shepherd do? He or she listens for the bleeding of a lamb in distress. The shepherd hears the cry and moves towards the one in need. Jesus continued the story by saying, And when he has found the lost sheep, he lays him on his shoulders rejoicing. Luke chapter 15, verse 5. Now, the shepherd does not scold or shout at the sheep. He lovingly returns the lost one to the rest of the sheep, the fold. The shepherd himself has great joy in finding his lost lamb. Prophet Isaiah said, Messiah will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. What wonderful words. Jesus said, when the shepherd finally returns home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Luke chapter 15 and verse 6. Jesus finished the story by saying, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. This was Jesus' first answer to the religious critics who did not want to give sinners a chance to hear the message that he preached. Is there someone in your family who is lost? Are you willing to take a risk, risk your reputation, and go after that one and find him or her? 
Perhaps the last one is you. Have you lost your way spiritually? Jesus always has time to go after the one. He's coming after you tonight. If you were the only lost one, Jesus would have come from heaven for you. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus came to earth to lay down his life on the cross for people who have lost their way. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I receive from my Father. John chapter 10 and verse 18. It's possible that people listening to this message have understood more about Jesus today. We invite you to allow Jesus to become a good shepherd to you. Let him carry you on his shoulders. Turn to him for salvation. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place on the cross. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill each one who has prayed this prayer with your presence. I can hear angels rejoicing in heaven over your decision to follow Jesus. Write to me and tell me what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.